Hey y'all, Steve, Hobo with Wood. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something that's kind of basic in Lightburn, but I've been hearing a lot of people just don't fully understand what it is, what it means, how it works, and how to use it. So if you want to learn more about LPI and how I use it to create all kinds of effects, stay tuned. LPI. What is it and how do you use it? LPI stand, stand, is, is an abbreviation for lines per inch. LPI, lines per inch. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's how many lines per inch you have in that particular setting. And how you can use your lines per inch to create a bunch of different effects better quality engravings or save time is that are things that we're going to talk about in this video. So first thing you really should know is what is your approximate spot size for your laser? And on most of your diodes, most of your 10 watt diodes, they usually advertise it as around a 0.08, but that's kind of an average because the diode rectangular or spot size is not spheroid or it's not round it is more rectangular and sometimes possibly ovaloid but it's going to be wider on an x and y instead of just a round dot so you want to look at your settings from your manufacturer on what they say your spot size is to fully maximize your LPI settings if you're wanting to try and save time. Because if it's wider in one way than the other, then you can use that to your advantage with the line settings. Well, you'll see. Let's jump in here to Lightburn and take a look at this. All right, let's say we have just a square. And we're going to make this square, uh, we'll make it just one inch for right now. Let's lock our aspect ratio and make it one inch. And if I was to take this and put it in a fill mode and then come over to my cuts and layers, and right now I have my LPI at 254 or 0.10 in, line interval. That's going to be 254 lines per inch. And if I turn off, well, it doesn't matter here either way. Say OK. And we're going to take a look at the preview. If you scan, if you zoom in and look at that, you'll see individual lines. Well, if we were to sit here and count these, it would be 254 lines that did this fill engraving. Now, if my spot size is 0.08, then this uh, line interval is a little bit larger than what my spot size is. So if I did a 0.08, that's 317.5 or right at 318 lines per inch and that's going to have it depending on how well it's focused and how exact that spot size was if it was a 0.08 this would have um, a darker heavier feel because it's going to have a whole lot more lines per inch and with no practically no gap between the lines that's not engraved but if your spot size is larger, and let's, let's jump over here to Rolly and look at their laser spot size specifications. All right, on the 30 watt, 
spot size, max power 30 watt, is 0.35 and 0.22. Here for their 10 watt, it's 0.06, but that's on the X and 0.14 on the Y. 0.06 still here for the 10 on the 20 watt, but not as small on the 30 watt when you run it in 10 watt mode. But I'm running it, let's say we're gonna run 30, in uh, 30 watt power mode. Well, I, the X has a wider spot size is 0.35. The Y is only 0.22. So 0.35 and 0.22. So if I draw out a spot size, and that was uh, 0.22 and 0.35, and that I've I've made that much much larger. That's theirs is in millimeters, and I just did that in inches so you can see the shape. This is not to scale, but you can see that 0.35x and 0.22y, this is your x, this is your y, so it's a whole lot wider if you were to scan this in the y instead of scanning it on the x. So a 90 degree scan is going to cover a whole lot more material every time it passes than it would when it's scanning on the X. So I exaggerated the size of that spot size in that illustration just so you could see what's happening here you know, when you've got uh, the dimension of the spot size, one of the axes is going to be much wider than the other. And that's going to be the case regardless of your laser, a diode laser. And you'll need to look at your manufacturer's specs to know what your X and Y are. For the Roly on the 30 watt, when I want to get the least amount of LPI, then I scan on a 90 degree angle because the X is wider. So as I'm scanning on a 90 degree, it's getting that wider, covering more area per pass. When you scan on a 90 degree angle, it takes longer because uh, from what uh, Patrick told me and informed me, it's because of the amount of weight that's required. You're moving the entire gantry now. You're not just moving the laser back and forth on the gantry, you're having to move that entire gantry. And so the, uh, I don't know, the ramp up speed or the, the acceleration uh, to get to the speed, it takes it, it, it takes it a while to get to that speed. Even though you've told it to do 8,000 millimeters per minute on the X and 8,000 millimeters on the Y, you gave it the same speed, it just takes the, the laser longer to get to that speed because of the amount of, of weight and that's required to move. The, you're moving a whole lot more stuff. That's what I was told. And that makes sense. So is there a payoff by using that 90 degree scan? Even though you're covering more material, it takes longer to do it. Well, I did some tests and we're going to take a look and find out. So let's jump over here to Lightburn and I'll show you what I did. So I created a, a simple little test. I had three different squares. These three I did on a 90 degree scan. These three I did on a zero degree scan with three varying uh, line intervals. And I wanted to see what the outcome was. Now, if we look at this one, that's a 0.35 line interval or 72.57 lines per inch. And I did it on a 90 degree scan angle. Now, 
if we look real close, I've got a little bitty piece that sticks up right there. That is actually the width of what the scan would be for that line. So there are 72.57 lines this wide on this 90 degree scan to make up that one inch square. On the blue, with a point one and on a 90 degree scan, that's 254 lines per inch. So 254 lines per inch versus 72 lines per inch. So 254 divided by 72, there's three and a half times the lines on the blue layer as there is the black layer. And down here is the estimated time for each square. So with this one having so fewer lines, it's only 38 seconds. This one jumped two minutes and 18 seconds and, and a 0.08 was 219. The times didn't change here, which I found kind of odd. Let's look at that and make double sure. Uh, if we go to zero degree scan, say okay, and look at the estimate, estimated time. Actually, it did change, I'm sorry, it's 25 seconds, yeah. 25 seconds and 38 seconds, 218 and, 100, and 1 minute and 29, and 219 versus a minute 20. So yeah, there you can see the varying, varying times. It does take longer when you scan on a 90 degree, scanning on the Y, than it does when you scan on the X. And there is the time difference, estimated time differences from Lightburn for each one of these, and they're the exact same speed and power and line intervals the only difference 90 degree scan zero degree scan so what do you think is going to turn out best which one is going to be the best possible outcome for this setup now keep in mind i'm talking about the 30 watt roly mk2 but these principles will work with your laser you just need to know what your spot size is and which one is wider. Is your X wider or is your Y wider? And then play with it. Now, I've got the physical piece here and then I'm gonna show you some photographs because the photographs are gonna show up so much better than the actual piece. So there is the test piece and Oh, wrong way. There's the 90 degree. And there's the zero degree. And the only thing I didn't like about how this one showed up is it wasn't quite as dark as I'd like it to be. So I did a second test with a little more power to see what that's going to look like. But let's look at the photographs. Let's see if I can pull them up here. And I don't know what order they're gonna come up, but we will figure this out. Oh, uh, yep, there we go. And then, nope, wrong way, come back here. All right, now, switch. All right, so that's after cleaning. There's before cleaning. That's straight off the laser and First thing that's evident, this is, and these are the same speed and power, folks. It, uh, the only difference is the lines per inch or the LPI. The, li L the lines per inch or the line interval. And this is showing you the line interval, which changes your lines per inch. But this 0.35 is what Roly is showing to be the size of their X spot size on the 30 watt at max power. And this is as clean as you could ask for as far as no soot and debris. And you can see there's no mist lines. You don't see any 
areas that's not engraved. In fact, if we look real close, you can actually see each line. There's one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Now this one with the point one or 254 lines per inch, first thing you notice is a lot more soot, a lot dirtier engraving. And then 0 0.08, which would be 318 lines per inch, I think it was. Much, much nastier. Now, these are deeper engraves. Here you can't even see much of an engrave at all on the surface. But here you can see there's a, there is a, um, a wall there where it's gone down and engraved into the wood. Then the, the zero degree. Now, here's the difference. 90 degree. Now, the, again, the same line interval. But now once we go to a zero degree scan angle, you can start to see, especially in the letters, areas that are not engraved. You can see the unengraved pieces of the wood, especially there at the bottom of the three. And that's because it's not, and that 2.5 really shows it, the, the Y is not as wide as the X and when we're scanning on a zero degree scan we're scanning on the Y of the laser. So it's n not getting as much of a feel with the, the each pass. You see the 129? You can start to see the lines when you do a zero degree scan angle. And it's still super 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 nasty. Super nasty. Now, after cleaning it, the thing that stood out most is all of that soot and all that got cleaned up is now, this is actually darker than this because all of the soot and burn areas gotten wiped off and cleaned up and all this was done was just wiped down with water. Same thing down here. Here it's not as clean of an edge. It's not, uh, this was the zero degree scan angle and I did the letters and all too, zero degree. That doesn't look nearly as good as up here with the 90 degree. Now like I said, this, was, this one is the cleanest of the bunch, which is probably not what you were expecting. And it took 38 seconds to do that versus these that you might have thought would have been a better, deeper, darker. They took much, much longer and a much poorer result. But I didn't like how light that was, so I played with it some more. But now I'm going to give you some side-by-side -side comparisons of these. And you can see that scan on the zero this is on the 90 much much cleaner and darker and you see all the you can see each individual line you can see where the laser missed in between each one over here you can see that the line actually butts right up against it because that was in perfect focus so nothing was overlapped but nothing was missed And then here was the final one I did. I actually increased the power on it. And I wanted to show you that up real close. There's your spot size. There's a single line width or width of one single line there. But I increased the power to get a little darker burn. And I haven't cleaned this up. I haven't wiped it down or brushed it off. That's just straight off the laser. And that was only 38 seconds. Oh, wrong one. So why it does take more time to scan on the Y on this machine and probably on all machines, diodes, even though it took longer, I got a better result when I went with the spot size for my line interval, increasing my lines per, or decreasing my lines per inch. I have much more, uh, much fewer lines per inch with the line interval set to my spot size. Now, what happens 
if you don't have it focused right. Well, as you come away from your material, your spot size is going to get bigger. So then you're going to start having some overlap. You can use that to your advantage. So if you were wanting to try and save some time, you find out which axis has your widest spot size. You scan on that axis if it's X or Y. And then you can raise it just a little bit out of focus and setting your line interval to your spot size with it just a little bit out of focus will give you just a little bit of overlap and you can ensure a better burn, a cleaner burn. It's not going to take nearly the, the amount of lines per inch to do it and it's going to be a faster burn. I hope I haven't lost you and I hope I haven't confused you. But uh, I was watching uh, Patrick this weekend and Jerry from 3DHP was on there and he was using his Roly. He likes to call it a rally. <laughs> Roly. Roly, Jerry. Roly. Like you're going to roll over. Roly. Roll, 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 Roly. Uh, but he, did, he brought an image in and was burning it on some bamboo and was testing my theory of on when you're engraving bamboo to defocus it, not defocus it, pre-focus it, raise the focus, pre-focus five whole millimeters. Then running on, on the rolly, running on a, the 90 degree scan angle and go across the grain so you make sure that the laser is perpendicular to the grain of the bamboo and then run it at speeds of uh, 11, 5 to you know 20,000 millimeters a minute at 100% power and in a slight line after field to give it some definition and see how it turned out. Well, he got everything right except his image imported into Lightburn at like 520 something lines per inch or uh, DPI. It was an image, so I think it's referred to as dots per inch on an image. Well, that is, was an astronomically high number of lines per inch and was going to take forever. The fact they ended up having to end the live stream before he even got 10% uh, through that image because it was scanning so much. And that defeats the purpose of going on the Y and, and raising it because you want to, you know, go as fast as, complete it as fast as you can and all those extra overlapping lines were not necessary. So hopefully now you, and, and Jerry mentioned that he did not understand what LPI was. So hopefully now you understand a little better. Um, and now let's look at how you can use LPI to create some ridiculous effects. So let's jump over back to Lightburn. And I'm going to get rid of all this hard work. Delete. And let's create a perfect hexagon. Then we're going to... Uh, let's create a... You know what? Yeah, let's not do a hexagon. Let's do triangles. Alright. In fact, I'm going to put this in line mode. This is going to... This will trip you out. Let's see, go to cuts and layers, line mode. All right, I'm gonna take this one equilateral triangle. And I'm gonna say Control D, duplicate it, flip it. Then take it up to the top. Now we'll select them both, then Alt Shift V and weld those two together. There's a perfect diamond. Now I'm going to say Control D, one, two. There's now I've got three copies. And I'm going to take this one and put it right there. And let's see here. I want to. I want to rotate this and that's not quite snapped. All 
I'm going to use my control 2, control 2, and rotate that. like so. Now this one, I'll rotate it 90, bring this down here and snap it to that one. Now I'll use control two, control two, get my first rotation point right there, come up here and grab my second one and rotate it up to the same. Now this one, I'll rotate 90, and bring this in here like so I didn't quite get that one rotated all the way in it's good there so we're going to say control 2 click that spot and then come back up here scroll out and grab this spot and bring it in there. There we go. Hmm. Doesn't quite line up for me like I want her to. So what we're gonna do... Those two are right So if I snap that in there, I was, that should have lined up, but it's not lining up there. Snap that into place. All right, I need to rotate it down. All right, so control two, control two. There's my first point, grab this and rotate it down to there we go now she's lined up perfect on all sides so I just created a cube ain't that cute now let's put it in an offset feel and let's look at um, all right there's using my 0.35 which is would actually end up being pretty much close to a solid field because that's my spot size. So let's make this uh, instead of 72 lines per inch, let's make it uh, 20 lines per inch and see what that looks like. It looks the same here, but go to preview. And that's pretty trippy. I'm going to take it on down some more. I'm gonna give it uh, give it 12 lines per inch. There we go. I like that. Got a little dot right there. So the offset feel and your lines per inch can create some really unique effects. You can use it with any shape: circles, squares, diamonds, triangles, whatever. And if you as you've just seen, you've put them together and or use a grid array to create some different patterns, you can create some really unique effects. Just keep in mind, you know, if, as you, you may have a great result, but then as soon as you reduce it to fit the, your work area or whatever, then your lines per inch are going to need to be increased in order to recreate that same effect. Because as you reduce the size, you're going to need more lines per inch to see that same illusion. Play with it, experiment, you know, change it, change it up, look at your preview and see what it's going to look like. Use your preview before you do anything and see how it's going to uh, look. And then once you do it, it may not look as good as you hoped it would, but uh, play with it and use your scrap materials. And you know, you've got a pile of scrap laying around. We all do. But try to think outside the box and some of the things are counterintuitive. You would think that the more lines per inch you have, the better it's going to be. But 
No, it may only just it may just take you longer to create a less desirable less desirable result. Find your manufacturer's specifications for your laser. See what your spot size is. Play with your X and Y scanning, your zero degree scanning and your 90 degree scanning. You may find that there are better options than what you have been using all along and uh, maybe a light bulb will finally go off for you. Uh, it'll be like, oh man, okay, now this does make so much more sense. Keep in mind, as you change your focus, that can also change, well, it, it can, it does. It changes your spot size. As you raise your focus, your spot size is going to get larger. So you can use a slightly pre-focused laser running on your widest possible um, axis and cut your engrave time down considerably. Try it. Play with it. See what kind of results you get. Keep in mind, June 15th, I'm going to look at my calendar. I don't want to tell you wrong because I told the wrong time the other day. Uh, yeah, June 15th, 6-15. Yeah, <laughs> will be my two-year anniversary. And for my two-year anniversary this year, last year, my first year anniversary, I celebrated by getting a haircut. <laughs> This year for my two-year anniversary, we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to give away a Rolly Lasermatic. Don't know which one we're giving away yet because it's going to be a matter of you know, what's available and what we can do, but there will be a brand new Rolly Lasermatic going home to somebody during that live stream. All you got to do is be present to watch, uh, to win. So set your alarms, set your calendars, make a note, tattoo it on your eyelids, whatever you need to do, June 15th, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. June 15th, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. That's an early live stream for me. That way, the folks in the European or the, the Eastern Hemisphere are able to tune in at a reasonable hour and not miss out on the opportunity to win a brand new Rolly. Because this is not limited to the 48 states. This is available to anybody watching. Big shout out to my patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate your support. I could not and would not be here without your continued support. Patrons have the best deal going, folks. A gold patron is a $20 a month sponsorship, but you get a 100% off coupon for all of my digital files on hobowithwood.com. Silver gets 80% off and bronze gets 60% off. I'm going to be putting this up this week. I started it out uh, as a kind of a birth announcement bear, but I've decided I'm going to go with more of a kind of a, a greeting card kind of a bear. Get rid of this heart right here and just open it up so you can put whatever kind of artwork you would like to have on here. Clean up the paw pads, make some different changes. And this would be great for Valentine's Day, for Mother's Day, for whatever you want. You know, for Mother's Day, you might, uh, Happy Mother's Day, you were barely there. <laughs> I don't know, whatever you, whatever you want to put on there. Uh, you are the very best, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'll get that up this week as I make, after I get the changes made to it. And I'm going to come up with a couple more Mother's Day designs between now and this weekend, get those online. Had to knock out a whole bunch of a flask after the live stream with John. Um, sold out of all the flask. So he just doubled up on his order and we're gonna get those resupplied. So if you went to the, the website and they were sold out, thank goodness they did so like that. He's got more coming. I've got, uh, got 20 ready, getting 20 more ready. We'll get 40 in his hands. Hopefully this week. Uh, thank you for you guys for hanging out and tuning in for us for that. I, that was that was a fun time, fun night. wasn't wasn't a whole lot laser related, uh, other than the fact that that's what this was about. These were created on my Roly, and uh, I just wanted to make you guys aware that they were out there now and available. They will be back in his store again soon. That's John Schneider Studios dot com slash store. And some really great movies, too. 
to die for really is a must watch it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what side you lean left right pro gun anti gun it has a message that it will appeal to all it really does so uh i strongly encourage and and you can watch that one <clears throat> online if you go to his store john schneider studios.com slash store go to the movies there you can click on it and actually stream it you know you can do it from your tv uh i i, I did uh I'm going to get out of here, go, get these finished up and get those down there to him so you can get online and purchase yours. And I had a request. Uh, let's see where, where, where. I gave away three of the flask with my engraving on it. Uh, that one's not a good one. These are some of the test pieces, but this is uh, Hobo Nation Thirst Aid, and it's got the hobo in there, and then Hobo Nation Thirst Aid. A few people said, hey, I, I, I gave away three of them, and I've sold a few. So uh, if you would like to have a Hobo Nation Thirst Aid, uh, eight ounce glass flask instead of the Revenuers Reserve that John's selling, I can make these available to you uh, at, uh, <clears throat> I think it's about 45 a piece, uh, plus tax and freight. Uh, it'll come out to about, a, I'm probably close to the same what he's selling his for. A little less, a little less. But uh, send me an email, hobowithwood at gmail.com. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. Let me know, hey, I'm interested in a Hobo Nation flask. And I'll make them and send you uh, an invoice through QuickBooks or PayPal, and I'll get one right out to you. So thanks for watching. Make a mark on your calendar, June 15th, 3 p.m. Somebody's going home with a new Roly. Hopefully you learned a little something today. I didn't scramble your brain too much or get you any more confused than you already were. I'm going to get out of here. I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.